I think for the first time ever, I'm not waiting for something bad to happen, but expecting something good. I'm not fearing or anticipating the moment my world gets all shaky and unstable, but opening my heart to prepare for more love like I've never had before because the safety has become my forever home. And I've learned that the softness keeps getting softer, the love more visceral. I can count on miracles because I can count on myself to see every situation clearly. I've been crying a lot and I think these are the only words I can put to my tears. It feels like I was born into a house on fire and I got burned so frequently that I couldn't see past the flames. I would reignite the fire everywhere that I went out of familiarity. But luckily enough, I've been provided enough grace to learn a different way of being. I can feel that this home on fire that I would always return back to has been replaced by a field of flowers and every blossom makes me gas, sometimes ache in melancholic remembrance of how contrasted my world felt. Nevertheless, the garden is so beautiful now. New species of flowers sprouting up every season of life and it's complex in a way I never imagined. Complex not with intense drama, but with love, desire, dreams, and depth. I didn't know humans could be complicated in a non-threatening way. There's this deep richness to life that I feel fully able to receive from this steady place inside of me. Son entrée en scène déchira pas de voir. Like this engine pumping blood, this train pumping iron, like night and hydrangeas exploding into the ecstasy of lovers and constellations tunneling the black hole of me, the deep, blossoming throat of me. Picking out fresh produce at the beginning of every week is one of my favorite things to do. Grocery stores are literally a safe space for me. I think I see some lightning. It's so pretty. I am endlessly inspired here. I'm crying, I'm laughing, I'm learning so much and I don't wanna leave. I'm just feeling so full. I think that cities really do that to you. They just fill you up. in love with this city. I think going to that spoken word night just blasted my heart open. Watching people show up so imperfectly and weirdly and with their hearts in their hand just sharing a little pocket of their human experience. Some did improv, some did poetry talking about sex or drugs or growing up in the projects, some sing and I just love that humans 
will come out and support each other in that way. All through high school, I would go to poetry slams and it was one of my favorite things to do every, I think it was either Friday or Sunday at this place called Busboys and Poets. It was such a vibe. I would read my own poetry and I'm just so happy to be around culture and art again. And I, you know, was born in New York City. It was so impactful to me and yet the city just felt really heavy on my soul and I constantly found myself leaving to go into nature but Paris it's a city with all of that culture and hustle and bustle and art but there's also this softness and this slowness to it at the same time and it's like a softer city experience and I really could see myself living here. I have a new lease that I signed so I do have something calling me back home. I was kind of in between places and that's why I decided to travel but after my lease ends in October I think I'm gonna move somewhere for a year straight maybe somewhere like Japan if they're allowing non-residents back in or I just really want to immerse myself in a new culture for a whole year. I am not officially moving to Paris now, but I'm like, maybe I will do that in the fall. And maybe it could be Switzerland or somewhere in Germany. I am feeling like I need to do this now. <laughs> like I actually need to do this for my heart is find um, some kind of visa and spend a year outside of the country, do some kind of workshop, sabbatical. Everything that I wanted to find in this trip has come to fruition. I found a new part of my voice and a new belief system and I just feel all this new life in my heart. And I also wanted to talk about uh, what people call the Paris syndrome, how it's so romanticized online and then people come here and it's not as nice as they thought and they literally get sick because of it and feel unwell and I think that any place online can be romanticized and that would honestly be a really fun video idea like going to the dumpiest dump and making a little indie film and making it a vibe and then you know people would want to go there and have that same experience but the truth is that you are bringing yourself everywhere and the peace that you bring to the top of the mountain is the peace you're going to leave the mountain with and you can have a personal, deep, spiritual, expansive experience anywhere that you are if you are seeking that out and of course it's maybe easier in cities but it's also the way that I'm filming things, the music I put over it, the people that I'm meeting, the season of my life that I'm in that affect the way that this comes off. And maybe if you came to Paris, you would have a completely different experience. And um, I would have a different experience if I was in a different season and wasn't feeling as open. I just say this because I think for most of my life, I idealized every single decision. Like I just am so good at romanticizing things that I would romanticize them out of reality and then I would show up and I'd be like, oh, I wasn't actually listening to what was aligning for me and the fact that this wasn't my time to be here and the reality is not supportive and not abundant and for example, when I moved to LA, I moved there just because of all the Tumblr photos that I saw and the Lana Del Rey music videos and I had this dream in my head that I would just get whisked away in this Hollywood world or not Hollywood but just like that I would surf every day and learn how to longboard and everything would be a vibe but my present reality was that I was depressed and broke and had um, no real friends or support there and so when I went there it was um, pretty much a very lonely shit show and it was like reality really hit me and ever since that experience I just really make sure that my decisions are grounded in some way and not just like a mental idealization or you know so many of us are posting these videos buying a one way here and there and um, there is a privilege to that of course and so just really tuning into like what is aligning for you what feels effortless what feels like it's going to bring you to more love and not more chaos or instability i really am having a grand time here and it's for all of those reasons the privilege and the season of my life and the openness of my heart and all of that that just have made this experience so so beautiful and you're just always co-creating with life. You're always the energy that you're bringing to the world is usually the energy that will return back to you in some way and I am just so grateful to be open right now and 
be so sensitive. I'm literally holding my heart out to the city and it's just like yoking it and painting on it and I'm just like putting it back into my heart and then recalibrating. So <laughs> anyway, so I'm gonna head out of here and I'm going to a rave later tonight with some friends with Moya and Leah. So this will be really fun. just say we went to sleep at a right 5 a.m. and it is now noon I actually woke up around 10 and started editing and cleaning and organizing and have just so much energy I think that it was really healing to dance last night for hours and move my energy around because I feel so refreshed and I think that's also what happens when you go out and you don't drink and you literally just stay hydrated and you breathe deeply and you feel into your body I was sending love to everyone there last night and it was so felt really respectful and everyone just had their own little groups and was just trying to catch a vibe and I just didn't feel any weird or unsafe or invasive energy at all. Honestly, what I liked the most about it was the fact that it was in a warehouse and that it was in Paris because I watched Skins all throughout high school, if you know that show. It's not the best influence for a young developing mind, but I always kind of thought that that was so cool to just go to a warehouse event of some sort and have a wild night. And I feel like I did that last night in a really like peaceful and chill way. Yeah, I feel like I'm just living out tiny little dreams and visions that I've had here. As random as dancing in a warehouse is, that's just something that I've always wanted to do. So I can check that off of my bucket list. And it's just been so full and busy in a way, which is so wild to experience in a city that you've never been to, to have so many little outlets of love. So I'm just really, really grateful, honestly. I'm going to drop into a yoga practice this morning and meet some friends at the park today. I really want to chant and meditate with them. It's one of my favorite things to do is meditate in groups with other people because it just amplifies the energy, especially chanting as well. It is so heavenly and gets you naturally high to be sharing your frequencies together in that way. I wanted to show you my outfit of the day today. I'm not just wearing any dress, I'm wearing the dress. And this is uh, the one that I thrifted at the flea market, the Empire Waist. I have my little sock curls in, which I'll take out once I get to my picnic. And I just wanted to show you what it looked like and what the energy and vibe was. I really like it. I feel like every single day, depending on what I wear, I kind of shape shift, but I've been really liking just very fan pieces. Uh. Six friends. 
studio much to my dismay I'm really sad because I fell in love with this place and Paris and I'm leaving tomorrow and more adventures await for sure I'm going to Turkey actually so that's gonna be a whole new world but Paris has my heart like an actual huge chunk of my heart resides here and just know if you ever come here my heart is floating around in the wind. We're gonna get out of here. I have to figure out how I'm gonna carry this down. Five flights of stairs. I'll miss you, sweet alleyway courtyard. I'll miss you, sweet old torturous stairs. I'll miss me and who I got to be here. <laughs> I'm just playing. I'm taking me everywhere, but okay, let's go. I just got to my Airbnb, which I'll be staying at for one night before flying out tomorrow. And it's my last day and night in Paris.